let's make this um, matching bed. This matches the lamp, so that's why it's a twinsy. Now in the thumbnail, this is pictured with pillows on it. I am doing a separate post that has the pillows. Okay, so I am going to show you how to do a little throw on this bed, but I'm not going to show the pillows because this will be a long enough video. So let's put that out of the way. Here are the things that you're going to need. Pick your fabrics or fabric, all right, whatever you want for the base uh, and what, you know, the bed thread essentially. Here's your throw. A little bit of floof, that's polyester fiber fill. You're going to need a couple of pieces of just cardboard from somewhere, something to mark with. Then you need 13 toothpicks at least. And then some wood. We're going to use some strips of wood. Um, mine already come in the sizes that I want. A uh, piece of balsa wood maybe. What it, whatever you have on hand that's fairly easy to cut. You're going to need your metal ruler, your X-Facto. You, if you wish to paint it the way that I did, then your paint and your paintbrush. Um, and then something to, to cut your fabric with. All right, so let's go ahead and actually start with um, cutting the headboard, all right, because there's going to be some paint drying and so forth. So I'm going to get some of this stuff out of our way. I've got a lot of stuff here to get out of the way. Okay. This, these are going to be part of the headboard, of course. So what I want to do is I want to cut in for the headboard. Um, what I want to do, let's make sure here, because I've got a lot of instructions on this one, folks. Okay, now the headboard needs to be about two millimeters. I know, this is rough. Okay, so it's going to be two millimeters wide. All right, I, I want that to be thin. I can't use a toothpick. It won't cut well. So that's approximately two millimeters that I'm going to cut, in this case, balsa wood. Cut as carefully as possible. I am going to be sanding this, so slight mistakes can also be corrected. So there we go. Um, we're going to put away that wood. So this now uh, is going to be the frame part. So this becomes this frame part of the headboard that the toothpicks will go in. And by the way, this is from a real bed that I saw online and I saw an opportunity again to use toothpicks. One of my favorite things to do. Okay, so I've got this and I'm going to cut this. All right, I've got my two millimeters approximately. And if I were to measure this side, I think it's three millimeters. Yeah, so I cut two, and it looks like it was about three millimeters deep. It works just fine. Okay, once again, see, I'm making this part of the headboard. And I want it to be about that width. See how well I did? Turned out the same. All right, so now that I have this, I want to cut three millimeters going, three millimeters width, I'm holding it this way, it's three millimeters wide. It's going to be, the headboard is actually three millimeters high. Okay, so that's on the end. So here's the other end. Got those. Double check them. Looks like they could use a little trimming. So I've got that three centimeters. I think I said millimeters and I meant centimeters. So I have that. Um, 
those are both ends. So in order to go across the top, I want to make this 6.9. Now let me double check on this. I'm looking at my instructions. Yeah. Let's go with 6.9. And then this is going to be adjusted later. Gives me a little bit of extra. Okay. So this is the part of the headboard it's going to go like this. Okay. So that gives you an idea of what we're going to deal with. Now, I don't need this wood anymore. I'm going to place that over here. Okay, so I have this part, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut my toothpicks. Hmm. And this is not a very exacting science. These tend to roll around. Okay, but I want. Just check, see the quality of it. So I'm going to cut these at 2.8 centimeters. And I'm going to mark that. And I don't think my little exacto knife is going to, I think I've dulled it enough that I might need the big guns here, I do. Um, so, let's see. I've got all kinds of cutting utensils. I can try this using my scissors. I can use this part actually and just cut it off. That'll actually save you some toothpicks. You won't need 13. You have to have 13 to go across the bed. You just have, have to have 13 different I can even keep some of these little bits, okay. I'm going to do a fair amount of sanding. I don't know if I told you you needed this tool. But, in fact, I want to do it kind of over here to the side so that I don't have all of this dust in the middle when I go to deal with my fabric. I don't need all of that. So I'm going to do this. It's not going to sand perfectly. I'm going to use a little trick that I did if you made the lamp that helps when dealing with wood that is cheap All right, I'm doing the best job I can to do a nice sanded edge and using my finger like this it's not just because I'm trying to it's also helping with the grain go ahead and do this for the sides of the headboard if I want a little bit more of a rounded edge to my headboard I can that's not how the original was. That doesn't matter. You do you. 
Okay. So let's see, the cut on this is even a little bit off. And I was talking about I could fix that later. And now is later. Do the best I can to get a nice surface to paint here in a minute. Okay. So. Got those pieces. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I'm going to make these sides. Now I cut these slightly more narrow here on my example. It looks like maybe I cut a little bit more off and didn't catch that. I'm going to trim this down just a little. I didn't notice that when I was making my measurements. So I just did it. Yeah, that's a little bit better. It's more like a, a square. So I, I'm going to go ahead and do that with these. I cut a, a little bit of this off. And I like that a lot better. Okay. Mm, yes. Like in that situation. Okay. Awesome sauce. Okay. Huh. I'm much happier about that. Okay. Now, <laughs> this is where I'm actually going to go ahead and do some painting, even though I haven't done any gluing. That's going to work out fine. It's not quite the same, are they? All right, well, we're going to see about that. Well, these two are much better than that. A little sanding, take care of that issue. See, this is thicker. I hope I don't know if it shows up on camera. This is thicker than the other end. And it balsa wood is so easy to break, so I'm trying not to break it. But it's also easy to shave little pieces off of it. So that that's a little bit better. Well, same here, I have an uneven cut. Oops, does break easily. Didn't break all the way, thank goodness. I have to stop and cut that. Not be pleased. Wouldn't be pleased. So this little guy I think is fine. He's very, very narrow. So this one, that's troublesome. I'm going to put the sand, the uh, nail file down and sand it this way because I already had a bend in this. It's really uneven. I, it, I strongly suspect it wouldn't even show. So I do actually want to give these a little bit of a sand. Some of these are kind of flat on one side. I don't know how much that would even show, but we're going to pretend like it will. Oops. I'm going to pretend like it would and smooth this out. All right.
Time to paint. Just going to um, paint one coat and then I'll show you what I promised I would show you, which is how to deal with the grain showing on cheap wood like this. And then doesn't matter that my get this on my hands it really doesn't matter because I'm about to use my hands to smooth down the green I don't want fingerprints or anything but I find that it doesn't show if I do this it's a little bit smoother like I said with the lamp if you made the lamp well you can always sand in between coats but I, I mean, I, I think that's perfectly fine. Okay, so um, I went ahead, I painted all of the toothpicks. Um, I went ahead and painted the headboard pieces. So now what we have to do next is we need to go ahead and we need to make holes um, so that these toothpicks can, can go ahead um, and adhere a little bit easier and I can get my measurements. Okay, across. So I had made a little bit of a mistake in telling you how wide this should be. And I had said 6.9 and I wasn't really like uh, confident about it. And I realized why. And that is because it doesn't need to be that long. Um, it actually can just be uh, 6.2. And I had a lot of measurements on my piece of paper. And so it was very easy to make that mistake. So we're going to go ahead and cut that little bit off. No big deal. Uh, don't worry about painting it um, on the edge or anything. Okay. So that being said, the toothpicks are going to go in here at about five millimeters okay apart it's not going to be an exact science but we just want them fairly evenly distributed so that at least visually you know if it's off you know a fraction of a centimeter or something like that it, it's not going to matter visually it's going to look well spaced so i want to take something i want to take um in this case i'm going to use my my sewing pin and about halfway would be your your 3.1 um and i want to go ahead the best of my ability and make a little puncture not all, i don't want to do that all the way through just enough that i can place my toothpick there and um 
can kind of be able to see where it is. Okay. And then I'm just going to go across and I'm going to, to go ahead and do it this way for ease and just go ahead and do across here about five millimeters a piece. Just give myself a little space. Keep going across to be like so. Best case scenario, you have that centered as well. In other words, there's the same amount of space on each same amount of space here and here um, that's a little difficult you could draw a line or something on there but the problem is like i'm using balsa wood every little dent every little puncture mark is going to show and that's balsa wood has benefits in that it is definitely easy to cut. Um, and then, but the drawback is it's really easy to dent and, and so forth. So I'm just turn this around. This just makes my life easier. And you can see I'm a little off. It won't show. There's something I'm going to show you about adjusting these toothpicks in there length as well so adjustments definitely have to be made with this oh, that's a little bit off it's not quite in the middle there it's okay not a big deal so uh, now what we need is our tacky glue and we are just going to and i'll just pull this this way a little bit I'm just going to put a little dot on there. I can remove a little extra if I want. The thing is, I had you paint, and then if the glue shows, we just touch it up. We're about to sand something, we'll just touch it up. So I'm just going to go across here, and I, I don't want to push too hard, again, as I was saying. And I'm just going to go across here. And, and glue these in and there will be a little bit of knocking one over in order to get the other one it's okay not a big deal so toothpicks they're just awesome you know put these in I can also with that one the one in the middle I know was just very bad and I can fix these they might not be precise in fact I guarantee you they won't that's why I keep talking about adjustments will have to be made unless you are phenomenal about how deep you put these like exactly the same then there will be adjustments and I can always check and see going this way we like that one and this one is, is definitely it needs to be pushed in a little more I'm trying not to press it all the way through I, you know, I can always fix it. You know, I could always sand it off or whatnot. Um, okay, so I'm going to just keep going here. Just put them in there. That one really went in. All right, now one thing that can help me at this point is I can put like a piece of wood, um, 
maybe another strong ruler. That, that one is just not okay. And I can take maybe this, if it doesn't slide under, get that out of the way. And I'm going to look at what sticks out too much. So to help myself, I'm going to try to align this wood with one of the lines on my cutting board and then bring this over. And what I can do is I can gently push the longer ones in or I can see which ones are the longer ones. I can do that and gently push that in. Now, the reason this has happened, not only because trying to in, insert these exact same depth is really, really, really hard. Another thing is cutting precisely 2.8 centimeters for these is really difficult as well. It's a really small measurement. Now you'll see that these won't budge in certain cases. And this little guy is very short. He really was pushed in there too far. So bring this here and see about adjustments. Um, I can try pulling this out more. In some cases, I'm just not going to be able to. I'm just going to have to go and press carefully, ever so carefully. And see what I can do. I'm looking for the shortest one among them. And just make everything match that. So, I can only do so much. Oops, let's get this lined up again. And I'm just going to keep, you know, keep trying. looking at this. What I'm doing right now is I'm looking at this line and trying to keep things even. Yeah, I still have some problems. Not as bad. It's a little better. This matters when I go to glue. <laughs> I want to have as many of these hit the, the space as possible. <laughs> so let's take a little bit of glue on, um, doesn't matter. I'm going to put it here on this side. Fairly generous. So we're going to let this dry over here where I can still monitor its progress. See, even the ends are slightly off on the measurements. When I made this, I must have made a lot of adjustments and then I forgot to write them down. Another thing is when I press those toothpicks in, I'm going with the shortest one, which is clearly not the same size as the sides. Doesn't make it total three centimeters. You know, so those are much shorter. It's okay. Really easy to trim these on the side. Super easy. Okay, so once I get that 
out of the way and also adjust these so everything glues pretty well because I want that as dry as possible when I'm done what I'm doing uh, next so I want that as nice as possible and we're going to sand something on that but we're not doing that right now all right I'm I'm fairly happy with that okay so let's clear some things out of the way now I'm going to get my um let's see here I'm going to grab that cardboard grab my cardboard and I'm going to grab my X-Acto, my metal ruler again, and it's time for me to make the base of the bed. And then what goes on top of it is like the mattress for the bed. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. Now, this is a queen size, so I scaled it on down for that, and I'm pretty darn confident that I have the right measurements for that. That part wasn't too difficult. So, uh, let me go ahead and, and turn to those measurements. So, so many measurements on this one. Okay, let's see here. My cardboard, both of them need to be the same. I'm going to check to see if I have a straight edge anywhere on this. Make it a little easier. This side is not bad. Uh, I can always trim this a little bit. Um, it has those like ripples. So I kind of want to honor that. You really just need a straight line. It's not going to show. Now, I'm not a cardboard user very often at all. I, I prefer wood and um, fiber, or I'm sorry, foam core. Fiber board is very difficult to deal with. I have dulled this exacto. Wow. Well, when you cut wood with it, it's not like I should be all surprised. And I really just need a nice straight line. I, um, so anyway, I, I was talking about, so I don't like using cardboard that much because I just don't, this is a weird thing to say, but I don't trust it. I don't trust it to hold up. Um, I don't trust it to hold glue properly, but it is so inexpensive. I mean, it's basically free. If you don't have some cardboard around, I would be very, very surprised. And so I know a lot of uh, particularly diorama crafters do use cardboard, and I have respect for that, but I just don't feel really confident myself. And I think doing dioramas is definitely a, a special skill, a unique skill. Um, and, and so that's, that's the deal with cardboard. Okay, that's my story. Okay, now let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and I want to make sure I have a nice square, squared off, cut. Yeah, this is off a little bit. So I want to go ahead and cut Hold this in place carefully. Here's another thing about cardboard. I feel like it's slippery. Look at that, slippery. I noticed on Timu, they make these really tiny squares square rulers. I keep wanting to call it a T-square. It's not a T-square. And they are adorable. 
they are, I don't know, I, I didn't look at the measurements on them. I, I kept, you know, eyeballing that and I was like, do I really need one? You know, do I? <laughs> Why do I think about that? Maybe you guys are like this too. I will think harder on something that'll cost me $2.38 than I do a large purchase that I've convinced myself that I, I need uh, uh, very quickly. I, I don't know what is up with that. So maybe it's just me. Okay, so I want this queen size bed to be 6.3. Um and okay i've got to use the magnifying mirror a second here so just give me a moment because i cite and i want to mark 6.3 and that gives me a scale that is um, true to a queen size bed this way is 8.6. And that one is easier for me to see. Who knows why? Yeah, that's not an actual question. There's no answer to that. So if I marked this nicely, which I'm skeptical about, just eyeballing this, then it should be a nice straight cut. I have to cut so many times. All right. That feels about right. Okay, let's check that. I think we are, uh, I think we're good. Good to go. Something I'm I'm not doing. It's not as big of a deal when I'm doing this with cardboard. But a tip I was told many, many years ago is when you're cutting with a straight edge, you should always cut, like let's say I want to cut this piece off. You should always cut with the ruler to the inside and that space to the outside. So if I screw up, the idea is that I wouldn't be cutting into the heart of what I want. And of course, I didn't do that. But I feel pretty confident that um, this won't matter for this bed. And that looks pretty good. That is pretty good. I'll know when I go to... To cut the bed itself. Now I can just find a nice straight edge and I can see if it's square and I can go ahead and use this as a template because the cardboard is so malleable that it can always be adjusted. So this time I'll do it the right way if I'm going to tell you then I'll do it the right way. Now, certainly your straight edge can, can slip, but it was pretty good advice. Well, a lot of times it keeps something from being ruined. So it works enough that I'll let you know about it, right? Just a fun fact, free of charge. Um, just to help you out. All right, so I'm getting into, now I'm gonna to start to really look like a bed. Let's see if I need that corner, yep. Touch that corner up, doesn't want to. Over that side, a little bit here, looking good a little niblet here on the edge get that okay so um good good double check make sure they're pretty nice to ah okay so now we have our cardboard 
Okay. So when I was painting uh, those, all of those toothpicks and I, I painted, you know, part of the headboard and so forth, I went ahead and I painted what are the sides of the bed. I just did that to, to save time. But your measurements, and this might be basswood, I'm not sure, but for the sides, you can use a better quality wood because you're not going to be piercing it, you know, like like this and, and, um, and manipulating it as much. So all I did is I have my sides. Um, I, once again, I have these strips of wood um, I have it in, in the description, the little pack package that I had bought a long time ago. And um, basically, these strips, if I haven't already said, are two millimeters by five, which is coincidentally perfect for this bed. Not coincidentally, I designed it, so I made it that way, right? Okay, now, um, to go around here, right, um, and to um, stick um, over the, the edges, right? I'm doing this part right here, and I want these um, these ends to be nice and clean, have those overlap the sides. Okay, so I just want to show you, um, you know, I just cut this. And I didn't do anything special. I just cut that. Um, I needed actually two pieces of this, it looks like. Sanded, painted, we're going to call that done. So that's that's something you'll do and good to go. So what's happening here is I am going to start to adhere this. Um, like I said, I have a lot of notes for this one, so I am flipping through those. A lot of notes, a lot of measurements on this one. So, okay. The bottom one, I need to go ahead and glue these on. I'm going to double check, see how I did. Um, looks like my cardboard was slightly large. At least the one is. Well, I didn't cut as nicely as I would like on that cardboard. Um, this this looks pretty good though. The ends look pretty good. I might need to trim up this. I mean, that's not major, but my short ends, I think those are perfect. See that tiny bit there? Oh, I can even see where my exacto went along there but didn't trim it. These, this is perfect. The Those are really nice. A little sanding can bring that down a little. There's maybe a tiny bit down there. It's okay. I'll sand it. Look up here, make sure this is fine. Um, check on this. Yeah, that one's even better. That one is cut properly. Okay. So let's look at these. Yeah. There's a little bit of a difference. Not a lot. Okay. So let's just shave off right there. Let's check this one. See if it's the same story. It is. You know. Check this. It looks like it will be correct. I believe so. Yep. 
one's going to go on top of the other and won't matter. It's odd. I'm trying to see where I made a mistake. I see where my exacto wanted to cut that off. I just am not fond of cardboard, you guys. I mean, I figure this is operator error as well, but just, just not fond. There's a little niblet here at the end is a problem. I'm going to measure it using this. Yeah. Okay, what are we talking here? What are we talking, two millimeters? Yeah. That's what we're talking. Okay. I should do it up here. So I can't see it there really well. Let's slice this off. I mentioned you're just about two through with me in these measurements. Let's <laughs> double check my work here. Okay, so these should, ah, voila. There we go. It's beautiful. But two millimeters is all that was necessary. better. This can be adjusted later too. I just like to get it out of the way. Double check this. Ah, that's a beaut. Yes. So this is the one that was a little bit longer. It looks like one of them was. Mm-hmm. Is this one the same way? Less so. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to adhere this. I'm just double and triple checking.
I can always touch up my paint, but I found I find that glue, see, is sometimes a little harder to get off of there. So when it comes to dealing with glue mistakes, um, then what I will do before I go to repaint is I will take a little bit of water and I know that it will pull some of the paint off. But then when I go to touch up the paint, if needed, then um, it doesn't uh, turn shiny in that area. This is a um, not not a big deal, but it, it irritates me to have a different sheen. You know, if I've got a nice lamp or whatever that I'm putting next to it, then in my house miniature, then I don't want that sheen on there. It'll actually show a little bit. And um, I want nice clean look. This is precisely the right size for this cardboard. Cardboard being cardboard is a little uneven there. This is why I respect those who deal with cardboard all the time because it's just it's irregular. Man, you gotta have special skills for dealing with this building material. It just doesn't want to cooperate. See, that won't be adhered properly if I, if I don't mess around with this a bit before it dries. Got a little bit more glue on the top. Hold that off. It's okay. If I take off too much paint, touch it up. Okay, these ends that were a little bit off, so I'm going to take my opportunity now to adjust before this is too dry and I see that they stick out slightly. Cardboard, stop it, just adhere. <laughs> Yeah, see that? Not a millimeter. I have to really make sure about this. In fact, I'm not going to take any chances. I'm actually going to mark this with my exacto and push this up. And uh, do like this. I just don't want to take any chances. And I'll alter that up there. Okay, no big deal. Now I feel better about that. Now come on cardboard. 
stay stuck. So a lot of cleanup needed on this. I'm just going to hold that with my finger while I build this. Scooch and scooch and trim. It's my new motto. A ridiculous model. Need some more tacky glue. Right. Looks like it's drying fairly well. So what I want to do is get some of this residue off of my hand for one thing because this is Going, it's coming right off onto my project, and I'm gonna. I want to try to uh, clean up the project. Actually, I'm gonna clean off some of this glue. Some little pieces of glue off of my hand. See, there's a little something down in there. I nicked that. <laughs> I have so much glue. All right, it's not quite dry yet. That's fine because we're going to go ahead. And so we've got this part, we've got the actual platform part of the bed. And so we want to go ahead and do the mattress. And um, so at this point, this is where you can use that floof stuff. So it's a polyester fiber fill. And you want to put a thin layer. So I'm going to first kind of eyeball this uh, floof. 
and see how tall I want my mattress. I made mine pretty thin because I'm going to put some other stuff on here. Um, but I, I don't know how thick you want it. Now, I'm just going to take a piece of fabric. This happens to be the same. And I, I'll talk about how big this needs to be in a minute. I discovered my sample was a little bit too small. Um, but easily easily fixed because I've got a bunch of stuff. So what I need here is to go uh, 10 centimeters approximately. If you have, have more or um, slightly less, you're okay because this is this part's not going to show. You just need enough that you can roll it under. Okay, so I need 10 and seven and a half. It gives me something to work with. Now, what's unfortunate about this sample is that it's um, I, I had ironed the other one. And this one has a slight, um, little bit of a wrinkle, which is you know, kind of like a, but I think it'll just pull out. It'll be okay. Alrighty. Go ahead and cut this out. Don't worry about that line. Not going to show. This puppy all trimmed up. There we are. Okay, so here we go. Mattress time. So since I do have that wrinkle, I'm just going to put it up at what I'm going to make the head of the bed because then I can cover it up with pillows um, when I'm I'm ready to do that. And uh, like I said, I'm going to have a separate video on making the throw pillows. All right. So it'll, it'll cover that up and this may stretch out to a certain extent. Okay. So what we want to do now is kind of turn, we want to turn over the cardboard and kind of press this, push this floof in so this is a little bit work more uh, <laughs> manageable floof is never manageable it's the thing about floof so you know you're going to need to um glue this have enough to glue. I put more floof than I did on the other one. So I have more floof than necessary. Not a problem. Thin out my floof. It's not an exacting science. I have absolutely no idea how many grams of floof I put in the other one. And just to, I see that because I did a little bit more floof than before, I'm going to go ahead and trim it so that I don't have a bunch of it thickening this because I, I should be able to do just fine with the measurements that I gave you for the fabric. So I will even it out a bit. And here we go. Go ahead and center this. Put this under. Okay, so I'm going to do one, so I'll do like this side, and then I'll do the other side, okay, uh, so that, because this is very thin, and there's a reason why I don't have a lot here, because what I found is it lifts that mattress up. A little bit more than I would like and I'll show you when we get to that what the the problem was and I'll explain it'll I can show you in the actual model 
you know, I can, I can show you in the bed itself. Okay, so very carefully, um, what I'll do, get out a lot more tacky glue. I'm going to use my glue and just go along here. So, doesn't matter. Floof is in there. Floof will. And just go ahead and carefully stick this down. And I can push so that it is barely on the edge. Just barely, because I need enough to go over here. And I don't want a lot of fabric extra fabric. I mean, if you don't mind if it's slightly raised, that the, the mattress is slightly raised, then put more fabric here. It's, it's fine. I, I was just trying to perfect something that I had done in my example. Okay. It dries. It's drying pretty quickly. Now, I don't want to go here or here. I want to go to this side. The opposite side and let's do what I did before and I'm getting some on the side as well glue on the side of the cardboard as well as the top just kind of and then I'm gonna pull see push this direction and then pull this over, and I should have just enough to do that. Just enough. And I put my finger in that, which was unwise. Because depending upon the fabric you chose, you don't want this glue to be on the front. Now my fabric, this fabric, I have found that if I get a bunch of glue on the on the other side, I can actually use some um, water and, and get that off of there and it won't stain it. This, I just have worked with this before um, in, in different things. Okay, so I see, you know, I can floof, I can push my floof in here. I can decide, see, once this is pretty much dry, I can decide if I want a little more food. Looks like I can. I can adjust. I can put in, put this part back. I can add all kinds of fiber film. Put that up in there and kind of, I'm still trying to even it out like I did before. And it should even out because I uh, adhered part of this. Okay, so I pushed more up here than down there. So I'll even it out. I want my lumps out of there. I'm gonna keep working at it until it's the thickness that I want, and it's it's fairly. Oops, well, just wants to bunch up in there. Yeah, it really does. I can just keep adjusting. Yeah, it really wants to just bunch up in there today. Of course. <laughs> this project has been rough from the beginning. Let me see. Let's use a different tool. This has more of an edge on it. That's better. Okay, there's a lot down here at this end. Now let's see. So this will go in nicely from this end. Do 
see that. If you have some of that uh, fiber fill that's like quilting fiber fill, um, that is also helpful because it's already flat and this is not. And I just decided I wanted more. I didn't have to do this. I just was looking at it and I want it to be a little, a little bit more fluffy. I have a few lumps in there that I could work on for a while and get those out of there. But when I go to do this, I'm going to stretch this a lot. And those lumps are probably just not even going to be evident. But I could do it. I could add more. I have plenty of room to do that. That's really not okay. So like a hole. Hole in the poof. So. Okay. So when I pull that, it'll be, it won't be so uh, lumpy. Okay. Now we have the other sides to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one side again, just like I did before. And now that I added floof. Just like before, pull this this way, stick it down. Now you have corners here, and I'm going to have you do something about those corners. But right now, see, I'm not really. I'm just doing this middle end of the fabric, this part. See if I can get that to dry nicely. Okay, just leave that for a sec. Do the other side, same thing. And I've got a little more fabric down here, how nice. I could cut the, a bigger piece of fabric. I wanted to. And we're going to go ahead and put some of that in there. Okay, so oh, same deal. Pull that as tight as I can. The tighter I pull that, I can get that wrinkle out of there and I can even out my lumps. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so now, oops, I really pulled hard on that other end, didn't I? I'm slightly smashing my cardboard, um, but that is okay. Um, so these corners, I want to sort of tuck them in like this so that if I'm careful about that then this side it may not be a complete point but it's going to be covered there's not going to be any frayed edge so that's my goal is to not have this hang out here or show from the side but just like this.
And so I'm going to glue each of those like that. I'm going to do that. I have, see, this is another reason right here that I suggested going narrow on your fabric. Um, and that, because see, I have a lot of fabric here uh, because I didn't do it quite evenly. And I, and my concern is when I go to, to do this on this side, then I have so much extra bulk, you know, and I can trim that. I, I can do um, a little bit of adjusting, but I have to be very careful when I do this. This really calls for my fabric, fabric scissors, then it does this. Um, these will be okay though. Um, I'm trying to kind of lessen the bulk without going too far. I don't want any fraying. That lessens that bulk a little. And then I can go in there and I can glue. I have so much floof on this. <laughs> but I had so much glue on my hands. I can't win today. <laughs> All these pieces of glue. And so I want to hold that down briefly. And um, see, it, it's it's le less bulky. It can be adjusted. I know. It's just... If we can head that off at the pass. It's just less time invested. I'm still making a nice even. See, I can adjust. I want them to look as similar as possible. See, look at all that bulk and see that end looks different. So, compress the cardboard in. Now, there's a benefit of cardboard, right? It can be easily manipulated. Okay, one more. Flew for not. I'm using this. This is coming up a little on the edge, but I don't think it's going to loosen completely. Okay, so... Uh, let's just let that dry a hot second. And, um, you know, it looks like I'll need a little bit of water here and there to get a little bit of that glue off of the face of this. And I'm using the one that I had for paint, so I have to be careful. And that'll come off of this. And it turned out pretty well, pretty good. And not bad. Okay, so this is the base. Um, I had said, oh, some adjustments might need to be made and little touch-ups and so forth. And so we're going to, to do that. Um, and I want you to notice something here. When I go to do my touch-ups, I am painting some of the cardboard. I just want to paint a margin. And that's because especially if I put a little too much fabric in the corners, it'll show a little bit. So it's completely unnecessary to actually paint the whole thing. If you want to, that's fine, but you have to wait longer for it to dry and then maybe the glue won't stick as nicely and, uh, you know. So I'm just touching up that. I wanna look at the sides, see I've got some stuff here on the sides, a little bit here and there. And what is that? It didn't get quite enough paint. I can touch that up, touch this up, looks like that. It's all good. Just give it the once over. That's fine. Go around. Do these edges as well. Going a little bit in. Now I would do the same thing if I were staining this, I do the same thing. Whatever I have around my edge, 
I want in here. Now, if you were leaving your wood natural, then I would still do something to this cardboard because we're, if it were real a real platform bed, meaning it doesn't have a box spring, then that would show perhaps, you know, so when I touch that up, anything that peeks out from there needs to be done. So while that situation is drying, then um, I can go ahead and, and set my headboard. And this needs definitely some work. You'll notice that the three centimeters, some of that sticks out, and that's because of the problematic toothpicks and how they don't go in identical. But I want to take my, whatever I'm using to sand, and I want to very, very carefully, by holding the corner carefully, I hope I don't mess this up. And what I want to do is sand this corner so that it's rounded. The actual bed had a rounded edge. It didn't just go like that straight. It had a rounded edge. And so there's, as I was saying, definitely some adjustments that can be made here. And do the face of it to make sure it looks like it's been manufactured well. Any little paint issues. Any problems that there were, and there were some problems up here, it looks like. Now's the time to take care of them. So I want a nice, even thing. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna take my sander across. I see some definite irregularities in the green. I can press this down now, and that's going to help me. I can try to do that over here. I have a problem with that. It's not even. I might be able to do this just by laying it flat. Yeah, it will. That's much better. make adjustments. My cut is not perfect. See, I still have to adjust here by holding it. I don't know if you can tell that. Well, it's not perfect. I'm doing this on the back now. I turned it over. entirely pleased with that but I have a feeling when I paint it I'll feel better about it okay so now let's um, let's go back to this whole strategy that I used before the toothpicks are not a hundred percent dry but they're really close. So it's, it's at this point 
I can hold my straight edge along those toothpicks, the bottom, and I can begin trimming them. Because I've already tried to square them up and I did as best I could. It's paint. are so soft. Okay. Oops. I did that a little bit too hard, didn't I? to cut through. All right, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, I'm not going to touch this up yet. I'm going to touch it up with paint. Looking for what side is the best side. Still got, got some issues here. Trying to even that out. And I want it to match. Rounding. There are some inconsistencies. Okay. Enough of that. This is dry enough to work with without ruining anything. And, um, of course, here's what I'm about to do. Um, I want to go ahead and install the headboard. It's time to remove some of that floof. There we go. I'm going to pick whatever end that maybe I have an end that I don't like as much. Like where this side didn't glue as well. And I'm just going to run my glue all the way across. That would be nice if I don't get it elsewhere. Like I don't get too much on the cardboard, but that can be fixed. Just go along here. I got a little bit on there. It just means that I could have, it would be necessary for me be me. For me to have to touch up paint even more. Okay, so we're going to take this and we're going to go ahead and um, do any of those little niblets. And I want to take the ends in particular and stick those to the edges. And I'm noticing my toothpicks are still giving me some troubles. They are very uneven today. I need a little bit more glue on these ends. Oops. 
These are the most important because they'll, they'll show. The end of the headboard will show. These uneven toothpicks can still be fixed. And the way I can do that is at this point, I can hold this this way and I can make my adjustments. So I'm holding this up and I can go in here and I can make my, my adjustments to my toothpicks. I might have this in the way of your view. I hope not. I'm just making tiny adjustments. Making sure everything is going to adhere. There could be some toothpicks like that one might not. It won't matter. You're gonna put a mattress in front of this. So it just, dealing with this many toothpicks You do the best you can. And we're trying to line up here on the end. I'm not sure if I have. Have this be nice and, and straight. Okay, now normally I'd wait a little longer to let this dry. But I have cut this video several times and that I know can be annoying to some people. So I'm just gonna wait a little longer. My last few steps are as follows. I'm gonna apply my mattress and then I'm going to deal with my feet. The bed actually has little tiny feet on here and they're at angles. Okay, one of them it looks like got squished. And so what I would normally do is kind of hold this in for longer then we are gonna to want to do that right now. And I don't know of a way to hold that firmly while I work on something else. So. What I would do at this point as soon as this would be completely dry. If this were completely dry, I would be able to get anything. These are just pieces of glue, I think. Any of the problems that I have could be taken care of here and there. When it would be completely dry, I would also be able to tell if the glue shows. And although the headboard being concealed, the bottom of the headboard being concealed by the mattress, I, I could be concerned um, with actually touching up the glue. It depends. So I would fix that. Now, when it comes to adhering your mattress, uh, here's my advice. Don't put a lot of glue on this. 
because what if you want to, you know, do a little redecoration, you know, for your house? So if you take this and you were to just glue it down a little, then, and I'm trying to be very careful because I don't want that headboard to come off, but I would set this in like that um, and just glue it down a little. All right, I can do my my renovations. I can do my redecorating if I want to. Uh, so I would want to look at this and see what part sticks out the most. And I may not, you know, if I, I know that I'm never going to change it. I'm telling you, when I do a kit, I, it's never finished. My kits are never finished. I, I, You would think in four years that I would have hundreds of these things finished. I never stop redecorating them. I just never. So I would, if I were working on this and had the time... I would continue to make adjustments until all of the glue is dry all the way around, particularly particularly those last the last piece of wood of the of the uh, headboard. Okay, so I would maybe do that lightly. Now I had you paint in because it would show a little bit of paint would show underneath this. See, um, even though I had you go really scant on fabric, that was not a lot of fabric, right? And it still would show a little bit. And that's not a mistake. It just is the nature of putting a piece of cardboard here. And I would be able to press it down a little bit, but it would probably show. And so I have a nice clean edge this way. Nice, nice and clean. So my la last step, and you could paint these ahead of time or not. My last step is to put my little feet on there. Um, I made the feet approximately five millimeters. You will have to adjust that. You must adjust it. Well, I, okay, there is a very high likeliness you have to because, say I'm gonna put a little glue, the cardboard may not be precisely uh, glued at, you know at the same height like I just push that cardboard a little bit so that means you know I may have to adjust these and once this is totally dry at that point I at that point I could paint at that point I can cut with a piece of, or with um Oh, I think I used my scissors so that I didn't pop them all the way off of the bed. Um, so let's see what else we have here. Um, I just dropped that all the way in there. You know, and I, I can go around. Now see, that one's going to be very long because that cardboard goes right up to the edge. So as you do that, um, go ahead and put it at a little bit of an angle. See, that one really has to be cut. Okay, I'm putting them at a little bit of an angle out, just a little, out this way. When I do on the side here, it'll be slightly at an angle as well. And you'll level them out, right? That's when you'll trim them, is you'll level them out. Okay, so it'll look like this. And if I put my finger on this, it doesn't wobble back and forth. Okay, so the last step to this, if you want this part, is the little bit of um, fabric. It's a little throw, like a, um, you know, a little uh, something to keep your feet warm, you know. So um, if I do a nine centimeter width, and, you know, this is very uneven, so I'm going to pull at these pieces. In fact, I'm going to do that a lot with this. I'm actually going to make this fray. And I'm going to cut a nice end so I can measure nicely. Oh, and that could lose. Uh, 
get a nice end to this. Nice and straight on that. See if I did fairly well. Now what I'm doing here is I'm dealing with this side. I can remove that. Okay, so I've got a nice end. Uh, I want to go, like I said, nine. And uh, let me see here, nine. Carefully because I don't know if this is going to show. So nine. Ooh. Doesn't show at all. I cut at that nine millimeters and then I will know if it's straight because I'll pull on the threads just like before and see it wasn't quite not quite so let's straighten it out it's a little better could look you could use a little touch up now what I want to do uh, I've if, if you did the matching lamp then you know that I said that this fabric um, it's it, it's gonna uh, I think I told you that it's going to kind of move a little bit it just has to do with the weave okay it's a linen fabric and so it's going to wobble a little bit. But I'm going to do something that I did in the fabric hacks. But I'm not going to go all the way around. I am going to just do three sides. Not the side that I left raw. Because I'm, I'm going to show you something. Now you can adjust the size of this throw as you want. If this is the right side, okay, actually I want that glue to go on the wrong side. I, I didn't have any problems with things going this way. Okay, so let's get that off of there. And... Well, that's wet. I can turn just a tiny little tiny fold. Okay. And it actually does not need to be perfect. I'm not going to measure it. I don't know. That's probably three centimeters, three millimeters. Okay, press it down just with my fingers. Okay, now you notice I purposefully frayed this because I wanted this throw to have like little frayed edges just like you might have with a lot of throws. You know, um, these aren't exactly tassels. I'll show you how to make miniature tassels. Those aren't tassels, but you know, a lot of throws don't have a really clean edge. So I was talking about this being, um, like five and a half or five centimeters. Um, I actually left more. I gave you plenty to mess with. Um, I just, it, it's not really that big of a deal. I'm just gonna trim this off and I'm gonna be able to fold it how I want. So what I'm gonna do is cut there. I'm just eyeballing it. 
and I want to keep pulling threads until I get a nice frayed edge all the way across. Keep going. Pulling them off here. Um, I'm getting there. I want it more like this. And I'm going to trim it as well. I'm getting fairly well. That part is glued. That shouldn't be happening. But since it's glued, it's really easy to cut that off. Mm. So I want these. Looks like I have two more I can pull easily. There we go. Or have three even before I start messing it up. Okay, now I have a nice frayed edge. I just need to go in here and it looks like, you know, it's it's not even. So I can just go across here and even it out. If I mess up, I just pull some more threads and I do this, see this part sticking out. And I do it fairly evenly, okay? Now, if you use those approximate measurements, then when you, you see this is the underside where I turn this over, I can just turn this about like here. And the way I know is if you look here, you see how there's my seam. Let's see if you can see that. There's my seam. And it's just supposed to be like, oh, that's the top of the throw. So it's okay if that shows a little bit because when we put the throw on the bed, we might not have it perfect, you know? So I might have a little bit hanging over. And then, um, you know, I can do that. I can mess with this. I can make it a wider one. I can take this and make it more uh, narrow however I see fit. And then all I'm going to do is just barely put a little glue on the sides. I'm gonna bend these a little bit, just a little. Okay, just a little, like I did here. I did a little more than I needed, but it'll come out. And then just put a little bit of glue, like here and here, you can see I put my finger under here. I just did a little here and a little there, and it looks more natural. Okay, so that was a long project, um, but I hope that you'll find that since a bed is a big piece of furniture, that it's worth your time and that you enjoy working with toothpicks again. Um, and I, uh, I hope I helped you out and that you will subscribe to my channel. Take care.